Anna was the eldest of the family and had, ever since her mother's death, which event had occurred two or three years before, been accustomed to take the direction of their domestic concerns, to manage her two brothers, to feed the pigs and the poultry, and to keep house during the almost constant absence of her father. She was a quick, clever lass, of a high spirit, a firm temper, some pride, and a horror of accepting parochial relief, which is every day becoming rarer amongst the peasantry, but which forms the surest safeguard to the sturdy independence of the English character. Our little damsel possessed this quality in perfection, and when her father talked of giving up their comfortable cottage, and removing to the workhouse, whilst she and her brothers must go to service, Hannah formed a bold resolution, and, without disturbing the sick man by any participation of her hopes and fears, proceeded, after settling their trifling affairs, to act at once on her own plans and designs. Careless of the future as the poor drover had seemed, he had yet kept clear of debt, and by subscribing constantly to a benefit club, had secured a pittance that might at least assist in supporting him during the long years of sickness and helplessness to which he was doomed to look forward. This his daughter knew. She knew also that the employer in whose service his health had suffered so severely was a rich and liberal cattle dealer in the neighbourhood, who would willingly aid an old and faithful servant, and had indeed come forward with offers of money. To assistance from such a quarter Hannah saw no objection. Palmer Oakley and the parish were quite distinct things. Of him, accordingly, she asked, not money, but something much more in his own way. A cow, any cow, old or lame, or what not, so that it were a cow. She would be bound to keep it well. If she did not, he might take it back again. She even hoped to pay for it by and by, by instalments, but that she would not promise. And partly amused, partly interested by the child's earnestness, the wealthy yeoman gave her, not as a purchase, but as a present, a very fine young Alderney. She then went to the lord of the manor, and with equal knowledge of character, begged his permission to keep her cow on the shore common. Farmer Oakley had given her a fine Alderney, and she would be bound to pay the rent, and keep her father off the parish, if he would only let it graze on the waste and he too, half from real good nature, half not to be outdone in liberality by his tenant, not only granted the requested permission, but reduced the rent so much that the produce of the vine seldom fails to satisfy their kind landlord. Now Hannah showed great judgment in setting up as a dairy woman. She could not have chosen an occupation more completely unoccupied, or more loudly called for. One of the most provoking of the petty difficulties which beset people with a small establishment in this neighbourhood is the trouble, almost the impossibility, of procuring the pastoral luxuries of milk, eggs and butter, which rank, unfortunately, amongst the indispensable necessaries of housekeeping. To your thoroughbred Londoner, who, whilst grumbling over his breakfast, is apt to fancy that thick cream and fresh butter and new-laid eggs grow, so to say, in the country, form an actual part of its natural produce, it may be some comfort to learn that in this great grazing district, however the calves and farmers may be the better for cows, nobody else is, that farmers' wives have ceased to keep poultry, and that we unlucky villagers sit down often to our first meal in a state of destitution, which may well make him content with his thin milk and his Cambridge butter when compared to our imputed pastoralities. Hannah's Alderney restored us to one rural privilege. Never was so cleanly a little milkmaid. She changed away some of the cottage finery, which, in his prosperous days, poor Jack had pleased himself with bringing home, the china tea service, the gilded mugs, and the painted waiters, for the more useful utensils of the dairy, and speedily established a regular and gainful trade in milk, eggs, butter, honey, and poultry, for poultry they had always kept. Her domestic management prospered equally. Her father, who retained the perfect use of his hands, began a manufacture of mats and baskets, which he constructed with great nicety and adroitness. The eldest boy, a sharp and clever lad, cut for him rushes and osiers, erected under his sister's direction a shed for the cow, and enlarged and cultivated the garden, 
always with the good leave of her kind patron, the lord of the manor, until it became so ample that the produce not only kept the pig, and half kept the family, but afforded another branch of merchandise to the indefatigable directress of the establishment. For the younger boy, less quick and active, Hannah contrived to obtain an admission to the charity school, where he made great progress, retaining him at home, however, in the haymaking and leasing season, or whenever his services could be made available, to the great annoyance of the schoolmaster, whose favourite he is, and who piques himself so much on George's scholarship, your heavy sluggish boy at country work often turns out quick at his book, that it is the general opinion that this much vaunted pupil will, in process of time, be promoted to the post of assistant, and may, possibly, in course of years, rise to the dignity of a parish pedagogue in his own person, so that his sister, although still making him useful at odd times, now considers George as pretty well off her hands, whilst his elder brother Tom could take an undergardener's place directly, if he were not too important at home to be spared even for a day.